Hey guys, it's Bob True. So um, I want to play something for you and I want you to listen and I want you to understand how the quote Old Testament does not disagree. It actually complements the New Testament. The Bible says from faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. There's not like other ways to be saved. And so I want you to have that assurance because I know people are going to tell you all kinds of things and they're going to lie and they're going to say God is a respecter of person and all this kind of thing. But I want you to listen to this guy. This guy considers to call himself Rabbi Michael Skobak, right? And he says he's quote, Jews for Judaism. And I want you to listen to what he says. And what we're going to do is we're going to listen. But we, because we're spiritually minded, right? We're spiritually minded. <laughs> right? He's talking about being carnal minded. The carnal mind is that enemy to a God, right? And so we're going to be spiritually minded and we're going to spiritually discern what the Bible is telling us. Okay, let's, I'm going to go ahead and play it. By telling us about the Jewish people. The Torah begins with the creation of world. The Torah begins on a very universalistic note. It's the creation of mankind, of humanity. And our sages teach us that mankind was created in order to establish an ideal world, a utopian paradise down here, so that all people will be able to cultivate a relationship with their creator. That is- I want you to think about that. It says man was created to cultivate. Cultivate is like we talk about a garden, right? You cultivate your garden, right? And to establish, listen to what he said. He said to establish a relationship with God. Right? To establish a relationship with God. So if it's to establish a relationship with God, then that means initially you do not have what? You do not have a relationship with God. Because we know when the Bible talked about Adam and Eve, guys, and it talked about how they what? They were what? They were essentially, they were kicked out of the quote unquote garden, right? And he said, the day that thou of it, thou shalt surely die. And when you, death, you're separated from God through what? death and that's why jesus said my sheep they never perish god is the god of the living and not the dead god takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked and that's why they that are in the flesh cannot please god that's what the bible is explaining and god made everything good but when man sinned he corrupted not just himself but the whole world that's why it says the whole world is darkness and that's why it says uh they that are in the flesh can't please god so when you get people who are trying to say, oh, you know, you're being a certain way and you're you're one of these Gnostics because you're saying that the, the flesh is bad, that matter is bad. God is telling you that all matter that quote unquote dies and perishes, which are all things that you can see, he takes no pleasure in. So when people give you that that false, that trope, you say, well, does flesh perish? Does it die? Well, that's why no God's not pleased by the children of the flesh. And that's why it says God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And it's the spirit that quickeneth that giveth life. Meaning God sees man as dead the day that thou without should really die. And the only way that man could have life is to have a relationship with God. Okay? The purpose of our life on earth, all human beings, we're supposed to be able to establish a relationship with God and you can't really do that in a world that is running amok. You can't do that. He's saying you can't do that in a world that's running amok. <laughs> I want you to think about what this man is saying. You can't really do that in a, war, in a world that's running amok. He calls this world darkness. So he's saying you can't have a relationship with God in this world. That's what he's saying. If you really listen to what these guys say, you can't really do that in a world that's running amok. You can't really have a relationship with God in this world. Hence, that's why you got to be born again from where? From heaven. You can't really, re can you reach God? No. So how do you have a relationship with God? Oh, you must be born again. You must be born again from heaven because you can't reach God from here. Listen to what the man says. When you're running for your life, you can't do that when there's when you're running for your life. That's talking about death. That's talking about the roaring lion, right? My sheep never perish. 
when the roaring lion is, is, is running after you, when death is pursuing you, when the grave is pursuing you, you can't really do that. You got to, <laughs> you can't have a relationship as long as you're still running from death. That's why God says, they learn the flesh can't please me because all flesh perishes, all flesh dies. Listen. All kinds of problems and evils that are running rampant in the world. We have to have a world that is stable. We as human beings are responsible for establishing a utopian paradise in this world so that we'll be able to fulfill. So when he does, see, now he's diverging. See, now he's diverging. The, the, he said he said something. Let, let's go back because he said something, and then I, it kind of escapes my memory a little bit. But he said something. Being rampant in the world, we have to have a world that is stable. Okay. We, we have to have a world that is stable. My kingdom is not of this world, right? Love not the world nor the things in the world. Jesus, I pray not for the world, right? So it's not that the Bible is not that the Bible. Uh, didn't tell us. It's just that now here's where he diverges. Here's that little subtle thing, that little leaven where he, he establishes, he starts out, he's like, you know, we need to establish a relationship with God, but it's hard to do it when, you know, with death, you know, we just judge that one dies for all, then we're all dead. So he's like, look, God's got a living and not the dead. So he's like, it's hard to do it. So how do we establish this relationship with God? in this world that's not stable, not built upon the rock, the chief cornerstone that doesn't have the good foundation that sits in darkness, which light has no communion of, communion with. We as human beings are responsible for establishing a utopian paradise in this. And how are we responsible, guys? God says, the kingdom has come unto you. Do you believe by faith, Nicodemus? Do you receive the words of truth? Do you receive our counsel? Do you believe if you just told me all these things about this world, it's run amok. It's full of death, right? Then, okay, is this the kingdom you want? Hopefully not. So now you understand that this world, which is run amok, which is, is sinful, which men do not keep the law, Nicodemus, are you going to understand that you yourself need to be born again in a whole different kingdom? Is that what you desire or do you treasure the things of this world? Because where your heart is, Nicodemus, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. World, so that we'll be able to fulfill our function as human beings. However, the book of Genesis reveals to us failure after failure among the human world. We did not get off to a good start. He said failure after failure among the human world, guys. And it continued to go downhill from there. Yep. And so what happens is that finally God chooses Abraham and makes a covenant with him for Abraham to foster a nation that would help the world to move in the direction of righteousness and to be able to fulfill its potential as human beings. Think about it, but not as human beings, as children of God. He says, in a, God chooses Abraham. Let's talk about he will, uh, in the quote, quote, direction of righteousness. And we know the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. Only God is righteous. So you got to be what? found in him having not my own righteousness and so he's going to tell us why god chose abraham god says at the very beginning of the story of abraham right after god says to abraham go lech lecha, go for yourself go to yourself to the land that i will show you he says to abraham in chapter chapter 12 of genesis i'll make you into a great nation and he says to abraham in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I want you to listen to what he just says. He talked about the, to a nation I will show you. And Jesus told Nicodemus, unless a man be born again, he cannot see nor enter the kingdom of God. 
And then he says, I will make you a great nation. And he says, listen what he says. He says, in you, in you, I will make a great nation. If Christ be in you, right? It's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me, right? A Jew is not one outwardly, but inwardly. Apostle Paul, if I do the things that I would not do, it's no longer I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. But I delight after the law of God, which is the law of love, which is the law of the spirit, after my inward man in you. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's under his. There's no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the outward man, the flesh, but after the spirit. So in you will all nations be blessed. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. So Abraham believed God and was counted him for righteousness because he was found in God who is righteous. And then he says, go out and all nations be a light because I'm the light that's in you. You're no longer born in this world of darkness. You're born from the father of lights from heaven. So let your light shine before men that they may glorify your father, which is in heaven. But it says, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So this, this guy is telling you, like in the Old Testament, quote, it's telling you the gospel. But then people say, but if I don't hear them say, uh, you know, it's telling you about, you know how Jesus says, you search the scriptures that, because in them you think that you have life, but they are them which speak of me. I am the way, the truth, the life. <laughs> you know, he says, you're looking in the scriptures because in them, you think that you have life, right? But they are, they are that which speak of me. I am the way, the truth, the life. Okay? Abraham was not told to be a people just for the sake of being a separate nation. Abraham was told from the get-go that you have a mission to the rest of the world. And your mission is to help bring blessing to the rest of humanity. Blessed is he that cometh in the name. What's the name? Jesus. There's no other name given under heaven whereby men must be what, guys? Saved. I mean, I, do you understand how deceived people are to, 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 to have perverted this truth into making it about a certain subsect of children of the flesh? When the Bible clearly tells you the children of the flesh are not the children of God, and God's called the Father of Spirits and says they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And then people just say, well, you know, hypostatic union. I'm going to make God flesh. No, God comes in the likeness of sinful flesh. When I go to a person's door, they only see my flesh. They do not see God that worketh in me, a spirit. It's the spirit that quickeneth that giveth light, the flesh profiteth nothing. So God comes in the likeness of sinful flesh. But I am justified, and it talks about in 1 Timothy 3, 16, great is the mystery of God in this. God was what? Manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, those of us who are no longer children of the flesh, but ministering spirits of light, right? Preached unto the Gentiles. Gentiles are pagans, unbelievers, heathens. Believed on in the world without faith is impossible to please him. From faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. God's God of living and not the dead. Received up, unless a man be born again, he cannot see nor enter the kingdom of God. Guys, come on. Come on. Listen to him. The Torah tells us later in chapter 19 of Exodus, verse 6, right before we receive the Torah at Mount Sinai, God says to his people, you will be unto me a nation of priests and a holy people. That God tasks the Jewish people with this mission that our mission is to serve as priests, as teachers to the rest of the world. The prophet Isaiah expresses this in chapter 42, verse 6, and chapter 49, verse 6. He says that we are to be a light to the nations. And guys, it, guys, you'll be a light to the nations, but they talked about the world sits in darkness, and people are claiming that the light is supposed to be some geographic location started in 1948, by the Balfour Declaration. I mean, seriously, do you can you spot the faking of prophecy? Seriously, can you spot the faking of prophecy? You to be a light to all nations. 
but you're supposed to go and bless all nations. Well, how are you blessing all nations when it says, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord? And you're not coming in the name of the Lord. You're not telling anybody about the good news, the gospel. Isn't the, isn't the, isn't the blessing eternal life? Because it says, you know, the cross represents death. Hope everyone realizes what the cross represents. The cross represents death. You know, when you're in the desert and these people are being bitten by these serpents and he talks about they lifted up the pole and on that pole was a serpent. That that's the same thing as the crown of thorns, because what reigns in this world, the king that reigns over men is what? Death. So when you look at the cross, you're telling people, look, all the sin to come short of the glory of God. And it talks about sin will fulfill itself, bringing forth what? Death. So can you defeat your king? You want to overthrow your kingdom. You have to overthrow death. And now I'm going to tell you about the king of kings who conquers sin in the grave, who conquers death, whose sheep never perish, his subjects never perish. Why? Because he fights our battles. He goes before us, right? And we are found in him. We are sealed and sanctified. He is our armor. He is our protector. He is our sanctuary. He is our righteousness. He is our sinlessness. He is our holiness. He is our blameless. He is our goodness. He is our strength. So come on, guys. Like, honestly, like these these things, some people don't want some people don't want to believe the truth. You got to understand. And there are people, guys, when I tell you these things, I am not telling you to not have compassion and go out and tell the gospel to whomever, whoever who declare it, whoever will hear it and believe it. Then know that we rejoice. But whoever doesn't receive it, what do we do? We knock the dust off our feet because we say, look, you're, you're no have eternal life. You're from ashes to ashes, from dust to dust. If they don't receive it. They'll go back to the back to the dust. Right. To the cursed earth. In their kingdom, they will perish. Chapter 43 of the prophet Isaiah, verse 10. God says to Israel, you are my witnesses. We are supposed to be witnessing it's the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth. It's the self-same spirit that worketh all in all, guys. When people say God is my witness, and it's like it's the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth. The spirit of truth. Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me. Well, if Christ is in you, it says you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God. It's the spirit that bears witness, the spirit of truth dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, I'm the way, the truth, the life. He is none of his. Meaning, if you're not born again, as Jesus said, you did not hear my voice. You believe not because you're not my sheep. You don't have eternal life. My sheep never perish. You're a goat. So when he talks about so-called Israel and he's talking about these people being a witness, the only people who can be a witness are the people who, like Abraham, believe God. Because those are those who are born again who have the spirit of witness in them, the spirit of truth. Those are those who have the light in them. To say that you, quote, unquote, are a child of God as a child of the flesh is to say you don't need to be born again. To say you don't need to be born again is to say that you're not a sinner. To say that you're not a sinner means you're righteous. To say that you're righteous is to say you're equal to God, that you are God. Because it says there's none righteous, but you're saying that's not true. Those of us who believe, we're saying, oh, we recognize that God came to says he comes to save sinners of which we are chief. And we understand that the only righteousness that we can have is if we're found in him, having not our own righteousness. For the rest of the world about God. Now, the question is, why was Abraham chosen for this mission? I want you to listen really closely. Listen really closely really closely. This is very important. Why was Abraham chosen for this mission? The Bible says today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. As many as received him gave me power to become the sons of God. Jesus was rebuking the Pharisees and the Sadducees, all these people who he claimed weren't his sheep because they didn't believe, they didn't hear his voice. And he says, oh, how I would have gathered you under my wings as a chicken gathered her hands, but she would not. He calls them a stiff neck and uncircumcised of heart. And then the Bible proceeds to tell us that a Jew is not one outwardly, but inwardly. Circumcision is that by the heart. The Jew is not one outwardly. It needs that circumcision outward in the flesh. You know, the circumcision made by hands. But a Jew is one 
inwardly, and circumcision is that by the heart, but with the heart man believeth unto salvation, right? In the spirit, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be the spirit of God dwelling in you. God is the spirit, and those that must that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It's the spirit that beareth witness, the spirit is truth, because there's no condemnation in those in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the what? Spirit, they that are in the flesh can't please God. Children of the flesh are children of God. God's called the Father of Spirit. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Nicodemus, you must be born again. Come on, guys. So he says, well, listen to what he says when he says, why God, quote unquote, chose Abraham. Because he's telling you, look, choose today if you hear his voice. Harden not your heart. Now it's your choice. I have de the, the gospel was declared unto you. The gospel was preached unto you as well as unto us, but it did not profit you, you what you chose not to believe it, being not mixed with faith in those that heard it. So all who don't believe the word, it doesn't profit them because they want to profit in this kingdom by getting earthly treasures, which death will take away anyway. So it becomes foolish. It is foolish. Why was Abraham given this responsibility? So the first thing to remember is that Abraham was chosen really as a response to the fact that Abraham chose God. Did, There's a thing. Did, did you hear that? God says, well, you not, haven't chosen me, but I've chosen you. But how did you make a choice? Because God's saying, I've chosen you because you're in me. There's, you're not righteous. Don't think when I'm choosing, I'm choosing to believe all those who choose me because when you believe me, you're a new creature created in, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You're born again. New creature means born again. Old things are passed away. You die to the old man. You've forsaken yourself. You've forsaken your quote unquote lineage, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your wife, your children, and your own self. And you said, look, there's none righteous. No, not one. I must be born again be new creature created in Christ and be found in him, having not my own righteousness. So I choose to believe God over man. And when I do that, I'm a new creature in God who is righteous, who says he's the only one righteous. God chooses himself because all those who believe he is our sanctuary, he is our righteousness. This Midrash, rabbinic teaching, that Abraham grew up in a home of idolaters. His father actually probably manufactured and certainly sold. I Notice he said he grew up in a home, a, a house of idolatry. That's the children of the flesh, guys. <laughs> right? And Jesus told the Pharisees, because he said he believed not, he says, your house be left unto you desolate. Desolate. The, the abomination of desolation. He told him, he said, your house be left unto you desolate. And it's telling all of us, he says, we're stones, we're lively stones built up, spiritual stones in the household of God. Built up on the foundation, which is Christ, the spiritual rock. That's what the Bible is explaining. We've all been made to drink of that spiritual rock to follow them, and that rock was Christ. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, because all people must believe on him. From faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. It doesn't say... From, Oh, faith, and then sometimes works, and then sometimes, no, from faith to faith, without faith is impossible to please God, because when you believe, you have eternal life, but without faith, you perish, and God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked, and since all flesh perish, that's why God says children of flesh are not children of God, because they all perish, and his sheep never perish, and he's saying, look, when you get eternal life, you, you get that in me, and I can't deny myself, I'm not displeased with myself, I'm not displeased with the works of my hands, no, I don't dwell in the temple made with hands, neither my worship with men's hands. But when you believe you're I, I am the one I did the work. You are my workmanship created in me, sealed and sanctified in me. God is not like, oh, I'm displeased. I found some imperfection in myself. I found some uncleanness in myself. I found some unrighteousness or some unholiness or some sin or some whatever. Some that 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 see, guys, it's the Bible makes complete sense. But if you don't see it correctly and you're going to try to justify yourself and make it about your flesh, because you got to ask yourself, how is this man considering himself to be God's chosen people according to the flesh? He's talking about Abraham chose God. 
And so God chose Abraham because he chose God, who's because God says, I'm the only one who's righteous. For a living, the Midrash tells us that one day his father had to go out of town, probably to an idol manufacturer's convention. And he left young Abraham in charge of the store. And Abraham takes a big mallet, a club, and he smashes every single one of the idols except for the biggest one. And he puts the club into the hands of the largest idol. His father comes home and he sees all the idols broken into pieces on the floor. And he says, what happened? I put you in charge. And Abraham says, well, you know, someone brought a gift into the idols, but they all got into a big fight and the biggest idol picked up a club and just broke all the other idols. Because those idols represent men, right? Who lift each other up in pride, right? But are dead. So when you're dead, you don't have life. What do you see something that's standing, but it doesn't have life? That's an idol. Well, that's man. We just judge that one die for all, then we're all dead. Men don't have a life. God says, when you believe, you pass from death to life. But we see things as walking. God says, no, this thing, this, this, this idol, it's talking. And so we're like, people are under a strong delusion. They see this. We see, see people who, who don't understand the truth. They see people walking around. They say they have life. Because man has the power to give what? To quote unquote, give life unto the idols. You know, when you, when your mom and dad have sex, the corrupt seeds, he that sold to the flesh of the flesh be corruption. And then he says, I got power to give people, we will teach them our speech. But all men are liars. They men don't have the words of life. And so men idolize, lift up one another. And said, but they don't see themselves as idols. They think, well, if somebody builds an object with their hands, but men builds objects, your mom and dad, that's, they helped, to, they made you. So that's, that's an idol. They care for you. They love you. That's an idol. And then they lift each other up. And when, think about it. If you got to be born again and it says you don't have any life. And Jesus told the one man, let the dead bear the dead. He's saying you're dead. And a dead thing does not walk, talk, blah, blah. But people are confound, confused and confounded because they see these things like what uh, the, 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 this king, quote unquote, in this world is walking and talking and doing things and building things with their hands and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And they don't see them as dead because they're talking. But God sees them as dumb, blind, right? Sick, right? Right? Stubborn, right? Immovable, right? Immovable cannot be. That's an idol. Right? Think about it. If you start out and then you end in death, what is the point? And so when he says, talked about how the uh, at the end where the, the put the club into the idol, idol's hand, the biggest idol's hand, and they were fighting over the gifts. Yes, they're fighting over this world, guys. They're fighting over the gifts. They, they lie to one another. They tell you peace and safety, but there's no peace and safety in this world because guess what? How do you say there's peace and safety to a baby that's born yesterday when when you know death, the grave is waiting from the cradle to the grave? Where's the, where's the peace and safety of from the cradle to the grave? The roaring lion sitting there ready to eat that baby as soon as he comes out from the cradle to the grave. Where is the peace and safety in, in, in death? Don't give me the rest in peace sign. It's stupid. And his father says to him, what are you talking about? These idols can't do anything. And Abraham says, well, then why do you worship them? And exactly. These idols can't do anything. These I men can't give you eternal life. Everything men, that men builds and they love for themselves, what happens to those things when they perish? You imagine today, somehow, you were able to conquer the whole world. And you said, I've conquered this whole world, so everyone must pay, pay me tribute and build all these things unto me. And then you get older and older and older, and now you're sick. You like, bring all the beautiful women, or if you're a woman, bring all the most handsome men to me, to my liking and my taste. I want a harem that I won't share them. 
and you're so happy and gleeful and you're like, I can have the finest of everything, but then you're getting older and older and now your vision is going, bring all the beautiful women to me. Your virility is leaving you. Oh, bring all the beautiful women to me. And you realize that sometime, at some point you're like, oh, I can't even enjoy those things. And my mind wants to, my, my heart desires it, but my body is failing me. My temple is failing me. It's, it's withering and falling away. It's, it's going back to the dust. I can't keep all these things. Solomon told me about this somewhere in the scripture. Vanity of vanities. What does it profit the world? What does it profit if a man gain the world and lose his soul? All because you didn't receive the free gift of believing. So that's an idol, guys. Abraham got into trouble with the leading power of his generation. So the, 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 you know, he said someone brought a gift into the store that notice it's buying and selling, right? Because it's all the, the works of their hands, right? Buying and selling, so, you know, they got by the brow, they're by the brow of their, of their sweat of thy brow, you know, that's how they earn, right? And, you know, so this is all interconnected, right? And then they're trying to say, but when they're, they're giving these false gifts because they're thinking it's by the works of the flesh that you could be saved, that you can earn salvation. So they brought a false gift. They said, oh, it's free, but then they're like, it's free if you quote unquote do this or do that. So it's a false gift. It's not a true gift. It's not by grace through faith you're saved, not a works that they didn't mean to boast. So in their quote unquote trying to earn, what are they doing? They're judging one another because when they say you got to earn it, that's why they still accuse each other of sin because they don't understand the whole point of the remission of blood. And then the sin is no longer according to the law because you can't be justified by the law, but that was paid for. But so what's left? Oh, from faith to faith of sin because you believe not on me. So they're fighting. They're saying, oh, it's a gift. But yet they're fighting over the gift and accusing one another according to the law, not understanding that let he that among you who is without the without sin cast the first stone. Why are you accusing each other under the law if you said it's a gift? So that false gift is a false gospel. But they come bearing false gifts, right? They're ministers of darkness, not ministers of light, but they disguise themselves, right? And so because they're really fighting for the treasures of this world, they destroy it because their kingdom, they're fighting for the kingdom of this world. So that's why their weapons are carnal. That's why it's a physical club and they destroy one another. And God says, when they, since they don't believe me, he said he'll put it in their heart to fulfill, for, to fulfill his will, that they, you know, that they be just, that they destroy the works of the devil. It's like, okay, since you guys want to, you, you refuse to believe, then you'll destroy each other. So there's a great confusion in the, in the, in the world of darkness because the world is divided against itself and the kingdom we know that's divided cannot stand with Nimrod for advocating this kind of monotheism. He was the first iconoclast. And the first reason that we understand that God chose Abraham was because Abraham chose God. As modern writers say, we're not so much the chosen people, but we are the choosing people. Secondly, people who choose to believe the gospel, right? Today, if you hear his voice, hard not your heart. So anybody can choose. And he just told you at the beginning that he was supposed to go out and be a witness to help people to establish a relationship with God, meaning you must not have a relationship. So you got to help establish a relationship. So that means you'd have to be born again, guys. And he says there to be a light. He says God is light and in him is no darkness. And when we're found in him, we're found in light. And, God, and we don't sit in darkness, right? So guys, this is all like when you listen you understand, but but, you, but the way he reads it, the way he interprets it is going to be different. The way his understanding is going to be completely different than a person who is a child of God who spiritually discerns it. Completely different. I'm going to let it go. You can listen to the rest of this, but um, guys, throughout the, all the scriptures, is when Jesus says, you search the scriptures and in them you think that you have life, but they are them that speak of me. He, I am the way, the truth, the life. It's completely, it's the spirit that bears witness, the spirit of truth, the children of the flesh. Like, my sheep, I know them. You believe not, you're not my sheep. All the stuff Jesus says, you know, I pray not for the world. <laughs> my kingdom is not of this world. And, you know, think about this whole concept. The reason that these people who are declaring themselves to be God's people according to the flesh, 
And they're saying, oh, they're scattered throughout all nations and they got to gather themselves in Israel. Well, it's talking about, look, we who are born from above, we are coming down as the children of light and we're strangers and pilgrims of all nations. But God will gather us back into the place where we came from. Just like Stephen, when he was stoned, God, he called upon the Lord and said, receive my spirit. We go back home, right? And so when he says, I'll make you a, a peculiar people uh, above all nations on the earth, above all nations on the earth, he's saying, yeah, because you're from a heavenly kingdom, which is above all nations that are on the earth, right? Because your kingdom has no association with their kingdom. Your kingdom of a light has no association with the kingdom of darkness. That's why you go preaching the gospel of the kingdom. You're trying to give people good news and tell them, unless they, if, if a man be not born again, they cannot see nor enter the kingdom of God. You must be born again. Not of flesh, nor of blood, nor of the will of man, but of God. It can't be the work of man's hands. So I'm going to let it go at that, guys. Like I said, all the sin to come short of the glory of God. And uh, God, who's a spirit named Jesus, came and comes in the likeness of sinful flesh. It's Christ speaking in me. And when I go, people don't see my spirit, man, which is hidden in God. They only see my outward man, which is flesh. They see my quote unquote dead body. Right. But I'm telling them is that's no longer me. I, my new man is hidden in God. So you can't see my God. You can't see me because you can't see God who is righteous, who is invisible, who is eternal, who is immortal. The king of kings, the Lord of lords. So I'm telling people, look, you you have to believe God. It's God that worketh in me. The words that I'm giving you, these aren't my own. This isn't from some carnal mind when I tell you to believe the gospel. So I'm telling you, God is saying it all of sin and says the sin is not for a righteous man. So if the sin is, if, 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 I'm sorry, the law is not for a righteous man. And Christ, the man died, who is not God, but the man, the mediator between God and man, he died under the law. But the sin is not for a righteous man. That's why it says he was made to be sin. Who knew no sin? That we might be made the righteousness of God. Where? Not at the, after the outward man, but after the inward man. That's why it says there's no condemnation of those in Christ Jesus who walk not after the what? Outward man, but after the inward man. Not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's why the Bible says that. So it's saying, look, he paid the legal sin debt with his blood. And so he's saying, look, that required death. And that's the death that would be required for all of us under the law. But God says he takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. So God said, look, I'm going to offer you a free gift. And so once you believe the good news, which is God can give, God gives you eternal life. God gives you eternal life. And God showed through the death, burial, and the resurrection, he says God raised him from the dead. Well, if God raised him from the dead, who raised him? It says it's the quickeness. It's the spirit that quickeneth that giveth life to flesh, profit from nothing. It says Jesus, his mortal body, think about it, God's immortal, God's eternal, not mortal. He says it raised his mortal body from the dead just to show that he had the power over death. Right. Just to show you have the power of death, not saying, look, now that you guys because I raised the flesh. Now you guys need to believe that I am flesh. No, he's just saying, look, I'm showing you I have the power over death by raising this mortal body from the dead. But you should know that I am immortal. That's what God's telling you. So he's saying now that you if you understand that and you believe something that you have not seen then look, I'll give you eternal life from free, from faith to faith, which just shall live by faith. You believe it once and you're born again. Just like you're born the first time you're born once, this time you're born once also. But the, here's the thing. When you're born this time, when you're born again, you're actually, quote, in the body. You're actually sealed and sanctified in me. So I am your righteousness, your blameless, your blamelessness, your sinless perfection, your holiness, your goodness. I am, I, people can't accuse you because you're in me. They may look at your outward man and see you as the outward man, just like the lady who was caught in adultery. They may look at your outward man and accuse you. The great accuser will accuse you. But you're in me and you have my righteousness. And who can lay charge to God's elect? It's God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? Because there's no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, the outward man, but after the spirit, the inward man that's hidden in God. It's a beautiful thing, guys. And so, like I said, you can declare this to anyone who will listen. Don't let their outward, don't be like man and look at their outward appearance. Don't look at them and say, oh, because they're blah, 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 they're more or less than a sinner. Just say all of sin to come true to the glory of God. And you give that gospel and, and declare it. And whoever believes it, whoever hears his voice, they're his sheep. 
Those who don't hear his voice, they're ghosts. It's as simple as that. See, we're not being a respecter of person. So don't let somebody try to run this game on you where they're like, if you don't believe the lie that God's sheep are, are people who perish, you have a certain color skin, you're being anti-Semitic. Don't let them run that lie, that game on you. You're saying you just tell them, look, no, all of sin to come short of the glory of God, and you must be born again. If you want to start talking about some death and some history lesson, look, all men die and all men perish. Jesus says my sheep never perish. So how do you reconcile that with World War II? If somebody comes up and say, we're the people of the book, and they call themselves a quote, quote, Hebrew Israelite, and they happen to be black, or what people call black Hebrew Israelite, and they say, we're the people of God, you say, well, do you perish? Will you perish in your flesh? They say, yes. You say, okay, well, God says a sheep doesn't perish. If somebody comes to you of any other place, of any other group, with any kind of exterior looking at the outer appearance, you say, look, God looks at the heart. Do you have faith? From faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. What do you mean the just shall live by faith? I have life. No, God says you're dead. We just judge that one die for all, they were all dead. So you need to pass from death to life and let the dead bear the dead. And they'll look at you like it's a mystery. But then you can explain to them through the wisdom of God, the, God, the wisdom of God in you can, can tell them about the excellency of God, how God sees it, Right? And then you pray that they receive it by faith. You, you're you hoping that they receive it by faith, at least. Okay? Praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. King of kings, Lord of lords, to the king eternal, more invisible, the only wise God.